I always wanted to create a little MMORPG, so I sat down and googled how to program a MMORPG, and after a week of work, this is what I came up with. Let's start out by customizing our character. I'm happy with this one. And then we were born into this world here, this little village consisting of one hut and two beehives, where there's a lot of bees floating in the air already, ready to be attacked. So now we're in combat. The bee just lost one health and we won. We pick up the honey and the bee sting. The bee sting we can equip immediately and the honey we could eat, but we're full health. The bee sting helps our attack. So we have attack two instead of one. We can keep slaughtering the little bees here for a while. Oh, we've got some gold as well. So we've got one gold, six XP. We got nine health, so I can eat the honey now to fix my health. And I can walk around in this little meadow in the middle of the forest. Not much else to do. There is also wolves, but they are a bit too strong right now to attack. I'm gonna do that nevertheless. So they have 11 health, I have eight. Let's see if I can fight them with the bee sting. Probably not. Oh, and I died. I cannot move while I'm in combat. So let's try it again. So while in combat, I'm gonna show you the rest. There is a full screen mode. There is a password setting. So you can start by just providing a username in order to just get started. You know, you don't need to think about a password, but then when you want to save your progress, you have to set a password, obviously. And you can customize your avatar at any time. So yeah, that's the little proof of concept of my MMORPG. What's the technology behind all this? This MMORPG is at its core a remix app. I'm using TypeScript and obviously React for the front end and the back end is powered by Node. The data store is the moment SQL Lite and that's an interesting choice for an MMORPG because the first M stands for massive and while SQL Lite is certainly massively awesome, it's just not good at massively concurrent writes. And that's one thing that you need for sure when you have a lot of players that are doing things uh, at the same time Time, you want to be able to write to your data store concurrently. I tested this game with like five players at the same time that worked well, but I'm sure I'm going to run into issues as the number of players increase. So one of the first things I'm going to work on is the migration to Redis. Redis is a very fast data structure store. It's not a SQL based store and it allows to write and read concurrently very, very quickly. Let's have a look at the architecture of the game. I'm in the file container TS and I'm building a service container where I define a bunch of services and their dependencies. It's a file about 160 lines long and it contains all the services that I'm using in this game. So let's have a look at a few examples. We have the database service sort of at the lowest layer in, in the architecture. And then we have services that build on top of the database service. So we have the migration service, which takes care of database migrations. It takes the database service. We have the message repository. In my architecture here, the repositories are services as well, but they deal with database access directly. So further down the line, there's going to be some message service, which is it's actually here, and it takes the message repository as a dependency. We have stuff like map service, which takes the map, the tiled map. I'm going to show you that in a second. We have item service, NPC service, player service. Let's jump into a player service and have a look at the methods. So it's a spatial service, which means the entity has coordinates, so it can be somewhere on the map. Then we have methods that determines whether a player can reach a certain tile or not. Then we have has equipped, it just gives us back whether the player has equipped a certain item or not. Then we have methods like deal damage, we have gain XP, died, equip, and so on. So all the functionality is encapsulated in services. Then another architectural design decision that's worth to mention is service and events. When you walk around in my MMORPG, you can see other players walk around too. And the browser, so the client, is not doing any polling, which means it's not checking for any changes in intervals, in regular intervals. Instead, I'm using service sent events, which are events that the server can proactively send to the client to notify the client that, hey, something new has happened. Some other player has moved, some NPC was spawned, someone dropped an item, whatever it was. This keeps the whole system 
reactive and it will take off some load of the, the web server. Then client state or lack of client state. So I'm using Remix, which means that I have this routes directory and a lot of routes which are React components that are exposed using Remix and Remix is doing all the, the routing for me. This means that whenever the player is on the field route, which would be here, game field, Remix is taking care of the whole UI and view and so on for me. So if I change to game inventory, then I'm essentially using this route here. The cool thing is that Remix hides the client state for me. I don't need to keep track of where the player is at the moment in terms of UI and UI state. This is all taken care of for me by Remix. All I need to do is implement those action functions and loader functions. I am using Tiled as my Tiled Map Editor. This is the little meadow in the forest that we've seen before. And I already worked on a much bigger version of the map, but I decided to keep the, the scope smaller in order to finish up my, my proof of concept. 